What's Happening Delco? I'm Richina. Welcome to the What's Happening Delco podcast. Today, I'm joined by Kate McCauley of Danu LLC. Kate, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm really grateful to be able to chat with you today. I'm so glad you're here. And what I want to know is, Kate, what do you do? So I am founder and CEO of my company, Danu. It is a wellness company. I'm a certified health coach. And what I do is I help people manage stress by building habits that they can use every day at work or at home to be happier and healthier. Now, what can people expect when they come to you and work with you? Um, Talk about their experience or what you're looking to impart on them and help them with. Sure. So The first thing is anything I'm involved in, anyone who knows me professionally or personally will know that I put my heart and soul into everything that I do. So that is probably the biggest part that they will gain with working with me. But there's really three things that happen when someone works with me, either through coaching or through a workshop. The first one is that I help them believe that they can do it. We've literally retrained the brain through your reticular activating system, the RAS, as I call for short, and teach them to shift that mindset and believe they can. Number two is that I meet them where they are and give them a strategy to go where they want to go. And everyone's journey is unique, thankfully, right? So that's number two. And number three is that I keep them accountable and don't let them quit. The biggest thing that I hear from clients I've worked with is that previous to working with me or any health coach is that they quit. And they give up on themselves, whether it's their wellness journey, their business, whatever it is that their goals are. So that's the three things that they get from me. And that last one is, is really huge for people. You know, they'll say a roadblock pops up and I revert back to those habits that I was doing before. And then you have the fear and the guilt and, you know, you, you get stuck. So those, those are what people can expect when they work with me. Now you mentioned you do one-on-one coaching and yeah. you also do workshops. So talk about some of the workshop work that you do as well. Sure. So I do the one-to-one coaching. I do workshops and speaking engagements. And in the workshops and speaking engagements, they're usually specific for a certain area of mindfulness. So it could be an attitude of gratitude. And I'm giving people takeaways in the workshop, how they can incorporate that into their life right away. Uh, some of them are short maybe like a two week thing or a one week, or if it's a speaking engagement, a one-time thing, it could be an eight week program that I do in communities or organizations that run different programs. So it really is, it evolves differently depending on who I do the workshop with. How did you get involved with this? How did all this start for you? So I was a teacher. I'm always going to be a teacher and an educator, but for 20 years, I was in the classroom up until last April and Probably five years prior to that, I realized that things were just shifting for me and I needed a change professionally. It was becoming toxic for me personally. I love the kids. Anybody who leaves education will tell you they love the kids, but there was some other stuff that was just seeping in and it was not healthy for me. So it was affecting my life. I was, you know, my eye was twitching. I was getting headaches. It was affecting my relationships with my husband, my kids. So I needed an exit strategy. And I started to Google, what can I do with my teaching degree? How else can I use my skills? And then health coaching certification somehow popped into I probably the Google search. And, you know, the journey started from there. So I got the certification. And then when the pandemic hit, that's when I realized, even though I was working incredibly hard at home as a teacher, I realized that it was better for me to not be in the building. The the stresses weren't there that were there previously. And I decided that I was going to choose me, choose my family, choose happiness. And I I jumped in into the uh, business full time. So it sounds like what you're saying is, I mean, as a teacher, you're always a caretaker. You're always looking to help people improve, you know, you know, educate, make people's minds and lives better. So this is a very, um, very parallel shift to what you're looking to do, because as you said, you're looking to meet people where they are and improve an impact on their life. Absolutely. I think I was exactly where I was meant to be every step of my journey. And as you said, those skills that I gained from my experience definitely helped me and help my clients now. What do you feel sets you apart? So if you had asked me that two years ago, when I started this journey, I would have said, oh, here's my degree. Here's my certification. I have all this stuff. But now after working full time, working with clients, doing workshops, I would say that what sets me apart is that I don't believe I have all of the answers. 
I honestly think it is within the people I work with and I just help guide them. I hold the mirror up, so to speak, and let them look inside themselves and then keep them on the path, whatever their goals might be. This journey for you is almost for, in a lot of ways, people's experience where we are in the pandemic. And I say that because I think a lot of what some of those blocks that you know, the people are facing, that I'm facing, that may have also been even manifested more due to the pandemic. Oh, absolutely. Fear, uncertainty, restriction. I mean, things that people have experienced in their lives are early trauma or, you know, even something later, a, a relationship or an interaction. Yep. Where do you feel that the pandemic or where do you take what you do and where do you see like kind of COVID and everything impacting and helping people through that journey? So I think, I think it highlighted a lot of those things for people. And it, you know, for me personally, I traveled that path and realized why am I still doing this every single day? You know, and I, I don't tell people you leave your job, you know, that's a decision everyone has to make. But I think with all of those things we experienced when we had to shut it down and be with ourselves, we realized that there was a lot of things that maybe we wanted to work on. And then there was a constant roller coaster of emotion. You know, if you're a parent, if you're not a parent, you know, dealing with kids, going to school, your job changing, shifting, being on a Zoom call, you know, people having to learn new things. I think people realize that the importance of being happy and being healthy is a top priority and they want that. They're demanding it in the workplace and other, and they should, people deserve that. So I think, I think it highlighted it in many ways. I do think that there's a lot of work to be done for a lot of different people in areas that we could improve on. So I'm hoping to be a part of that. And um, I'm, I'm grateful that people allow me to jump in on their journey because it is it is very rewarding to see that transformation. You have a lot of energy. You have a lot of exuberance. You have a lot of passion for what you do. There are going to be days and times when the alarm clock is going to go off and, you know, the kids need stuff. Your husband is looking right. for where's where's my socks, whatever. Right. And what motivates you? What motivates you to get out of bed every day? So I would say what motivates me is I really do love what I'm doing. When I was in education for the majority of my career, I, I felt that passion, you know, that I was making a difference. And I really, someone said to me, oh, you're leaving after 20 years. I guess you weren't living, you know, I guess it wasn't your purpose. And I was taken back a little because it truly was my purpose when I was there. I was phenomenal. You know, those skills helped me to, to be successful now, but now my purpose is here and I feel the energy. I work incredibly hard being a business owner. Anyone who's a business owner knows, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes things that people do not realize that you're doing. But when I'm working on those things, I love it. I truly love it. I love that I created a life for myself that can be there for my family. My son, the littlest guy of three kids, two teenagers and a fifth grader, he has unique educational needs. And that required me to be available. I was teaching on Zoom, running down and helping him. And now we're somewhat back to normal school when he's back, but I am available if he needs me. I honestly think my shift into this position and what I do every day helps my kids. Sometimes they roll their eyes at me like, oh, here goes mom with another health coaching trick that we could all try. But I do think that it has benefited my family in many ways, because I'm not, I'm not as stressed. I, I used to drive home with no music, complete silence, because I had to come down from the day and I would make an excuse like, well, this is just how it is. It, it shouldn't be that way. My eyes shouldn't twitch at work. Those things shouldn't happen. So now that's, I'm in a place that benefits me and my family. It's really a ripple effect of, of great things, you know, but it's not always sunshine and rainbows. Like you that's said. what I'm saying. I so mean, we can't, Right. right. We and, can't and find the socks. Gonna... Yeah. We can't find the socks or I forgot my iPad at home. Instead of me now like exploding, I use the tricks of the toolbox that I give my clients to just be mindful, be in that moment and deal with it. You know? So I think what happens is life is going to happen. You know, it's not a path of rainbows. And when it does, I have tools that I can use and I'll catch myself 
you know, ready to scream. And I say, I, I gotta, I tell everybody else to do this. I gotta do this for myself too. So we're always a work in progress. So I think that's a good thing. That's awesome. Life happens for us, not to us. Yes. And I think it's easy or it's very easy in a way because now you're, you said you hold your clients accountable. You're going to be there for them. You're not just going to say, Hey, here's my big toolbox. Right. Have a nice day. Right. But <laughs> it's easy for us to absorb no matter what it is. I mean, you can, you can drive down the road and absorb somebody else's energy in another car. Sure. You could just feel it. And it's, it's so easy to do that if we're not mindful, as you talked about. So it's, you know, for you, you absorb, you could absorb clients, what they're struggling with, what they're looking to overcome, what their challenges are. So to stay motivated with that passion and that exuberance for what you're looking to do. And when you see where they can go and when you see the end result, that's just, that, that's the cherry on top of the Sunday when you it watch is. that manifestation of where they'd like to go, come to an, an achievement, right? Absolutely. That's the best part. So when the trans the transformation happens and then they, you know, send me a text message or something on social media and they say, Kate, your voice went through my brain today and I used this. I love it. I'm, you know, wanting to, you know, be a cheerleader, jump through social media and go you, you know. And so that is pretty awesome. It's awesome to see it happen. Kate, why Delco? What is it about Delco for you? So I have always lived in Delco. I grew up here with the exception of my years at Penn State, Happy Valley, and then summers sometimes in Sea Isle when I was in my 20s. But it's kind of an extension of Delco sometimes. In a way, yes. Um, right? <laughs> so I have been raised here. I live here in Millmont Park. My kids go to Ridley. I am very much involved in the community through uh, coaching and different organizations here. And Delco has a whole vibe that I just think is a great place to be. We keep it real with people. And I work with people all over the world. I have clients in Delco, but yesterday I was in a call with someone from UK and they say that to me a lot. You know, you just somehow say it to us, how we can feel it and understand it. And I think that's the Delco girl in me. Honestly, I do. It's a, it's a vibe. I do think that there is a special part of Delco that when somebody, either a family or an individual has something that happens to them whether it be, you know, a fire or an illness, a tragedy, I think that it is a really amazing quality of the people in Delco that we wrap our arms around them and we support them and build them up. And that is something that really resonates with me and who I am. And I just, I love that about us. And I'm hoping to do more and get out into, you know, the schools, organizations here in Delco, because I think it's important. Someone did, I got to mention this. It just pops into my head. Go ahead. Some, Someone said to me when I was starting this, it's probably, I guess, early summer and I was doing some things globally, which was awesome. You could do that with Zoom and I, I'm doing stuff in Philly. I'm there this weekend, actually. And someone said, you know, you should always do that in Philly or just jump on calls. You could be a speaker all over the world. And I, I will continue to do those things because I like it. They said, you know, I don't know if that's for Delco. And I was taken back by it a little bit because I'm a Delco. And they're, they were from Delco. And I said, what, what do you mean? What I do is help people be happy and healthier through habits. What do you mean Delco doesn't desert? Like, and they go like, what are you know, I got a little Delco, <laughs> I guess you could call it. And you went I, Delco on them. <laughs> right. I did a little bit, you know, then I pulled back. <laughs> but um, I think it's important. You know, why don't we deserve this locally? We do, you know, I, so I think that's part of it. And I, 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 I can tell you what you just said is very interesting because I had this conversation with other people that what they do sometimes, they start to look outside of the county because there's a mindset that says, this isn't for Delco. Delco people don't want this. They don't, they don't get this. But the funny thing is they do. And I don't know why that seems to resonate, but maybe that's a discovery that we'll find out. So yeah. you are going to be, I, I, this, all this popped into my head while we're talking. So you're going to be the first to do this. Okay. I I'm going to so. do like, I don't know, <laughs> rapid fire questions, something like that. I don't know. So you're not prepared for this. I oh, know okay. That, I'm ready. Yeah, I know you're not ready. Where <laughs> in Delco are you going to get the best cheesesteak? Oh, where am I going for the best cheesesteak in Delco? I love Michael's right okay. here in Ridley. Right there in the Ridley best, I love their fries too. All right. Now you're going to Michael's for cheesesteaks. Where are you going for pizza? Emilio's. Okay. That's an, that's a right away answer for me. All right. Now you're talking to somebody on your coaching calls, on your calls mm -hmm. that you're outside the area in UK, right? 
And they sure. said, and they said, Kate, if we come to Delco, where's one restaurant we have to go to? Oh, where's one restaurant we have to go to? Oh my goodness. This is, this is a tough one. Hmm. I, I probably am going to take them to get Emilio's if I'm going to be honest. Okay. All right. So you're not going to just leave them on the corner. Right. Get, a, get, I, the, get the septic yeah, trolley. I think we're going to get Emilio's pizza. Okay. I think, I think that's what I, you know, I've, I've had a lot of restaurants going through my brain right now. There's so many awesome. I love the ones that are locally owned the best, obviously, um, you know, as opposed to the chains, but um, I think we're getting Emilio's pizza. We're going to sit right. on the deck, have a couple drinks and uh, have Emilio's. I'm going to work on these questions. They're going to find their way. Maybe we'll add more. Or maybe we'll okay. just kind of, but, but so that was the whole inspiration. You inspired me to ask some other Delco related, Hey, where right. are we going? If we're doing something right. This has been awesome. Kate, thank you so much for your time. How do people find you? So if they're listening sure. and they say, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And it's something important for me to do in my life. How do people find you? So there's a couple ways to find me. They can go to my website, which is www.shop dot danu now.com and danu is spelled d-a-n-u that's an irish goddess we can talk more about that if someone pops in but i do free discovery calls so if somebody is thinking do maybe i want to do that with kate you know i i kind of need someone to guide me on this path you know pop in it's a free discovery call and when you get there you will also notice there's a pop-up if you want an email to tell you the seven steps to happy and healthy you can easily get that right there you can also find me spreading positivity on social media Instagram and Facebook. I usually post Instagram, then it pops over to Facebook. My Instagram handle is health underscore coach underscore Danu. And at Facebook, it is Danu dash wellness. Awesome. So one area I'm thinking about, is there anything other than Danu, the goddess of Ireland? Is there anything else we haven't spoken about on the podcast today that you'd like to have people know about you and well, what you know, Danu I, does? I think just the biggest part is that you deserve to be happy and healthy. And this transformation can happen for you. There's science behind retraining your brain. And, you know, I, I, my clients will tell you that it literally is changing their life and I can't solve all your problems, but I definitely can help you guide, you know, guide you on that path. So I am excited to meet you and I, I'm grateful that you and I got to chat today. So thank you. Kate, thank you. I am grateful for this time that we've had and getting to know you a little bit. Um, I love your energy. As I said, your enthusiasm and how you're blessing other people in the world and helping to improve their lives and making them feel that, hey, I can get beyond where I am today. And I have the ability to reach all these dreams and goals and aspirations that I set. So that's awesome. So one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I can say is this time has been tremendously well spent and, uh, People okay. need to get to know you better. And uh, if you're out and around Delco or you are at Emilio's, you know, <laughs> Kate will probably be there with all her right. friends now that she's taken out to dinner. <laughs> yeah, I, probably. I love Emilio's. <laughs> Kate, thank you so much. We look forward to uh, you being a friend of uh, what's happening, Delco, and, um, you know, great things for you. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful.